भगवते वासुदेवाय ओ नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओ नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय Live from Super Soul Farm. This is Wisdom of the Sages, a daily yoga podcast with your host Raghunath and co-host and senior educator at the Bhakti Center in New York City, Kastuba Das. Welcome to our show. This is our show where we study the Srimad Bhagavatam every day on a regular basis, practically every day. Except tomorrow, we didn't announce it yet, but tomorrow we have a day off. A day off because we're doing this uh, all-day program with Raghunath Swami at the Bhakti Center. And maybe you ought to just plug that right now, right? Tomorrow there's yeah, a plug it for you. I'm at the Bhakti Center. You can sign up <laughs> online. Go to bhaktisenter.org. It's called the One Day, what's it called? One Day Retreat? Something like that. One Day Bhakti Retreat or something like that. But it'll have featuring Radhanath Swami, featuring Raghunath, featuring uh, uh, Janavi Harrison, Yogi Charu. It'll be quite something. And you can go to, you know, you can dip in and out of it, but it's going on all day. We do it every year, and um, but generally not on Zoom. But because of the pandemic, we're doing it. We're still doing it. And um, I'm excited. You so, know what? The, so, so we're not going to have the show tomorrow. We went seven. This was number 75 in a row. We went 75 in a row. Pretty good. That's not bad, right? Yeah. It's almost very weird not to do it. I know. You know what I mean? I don't know what I'm going to do tomorrow morning. I'm going to freak out. Walk, wander the streets. <laughs> no, there's a pandemic going on. Just zombie Costuba walking to Park Avenue. <laughs> um, anyway, welcome everybody. Um, Wisdom of the Sages is a listener-supported podcast. If you'd like to support our service and go deeper into the teachings and practice of Bhakti Yoga, you can join our Patreon page. Patreon.com slash Wisdom of the Sages, where we host more classes and readings. By subscribing on Patreon, you also get access to our Discord message community, where we all get to know each other and share all kinds of relevant, fun facts, fun stuff. I just added that to the end, Kastuba. Nice. Um, so today we're going to do question day. So hope if you... Um, uh, because we feel bad because people write these questions in and tomorrow's our usual question day. All right. So we're bumping it up. We're good. Yeah. We're going to bump it up first. But we're totally disoriented. We, we, Raghunath and I are trying to get our act together. Like we're like, wow, we're getting lots of mail. We're getting lots of questions. We're getting, and, and uh, we said, we got to come up with like a plan and a system. And so we're just starting to get our act together with the questions and answers. They like, okay, we're going to prepare for this. And then uh, the, <laughs> and now we're coming in today. We just decided to do this this morning, so we're kind of winging it. So we'll do the best that we can. So if our answers aren't good, forgive us. Um, if you're listening on um, Apple's podcast, welcome to our show. Um, uh, this, is, this is it. This is what we do every day. Um, and we, we find it important to study books like the Srimad Bhagavatam. It gives, they are especially relevant for those who have this... Um, who wants some direction, who want a little good advice in this world, but it's not based on a, a latest, it's ancient wisdom made very, very relevant. That's what I like about it. Um, and the Srimad Bhagavatam is considered the essence of the teachings of ancient India. And so, and, and the Bhagavatam itself, itself says the way this stuff works is you hear it every day. You don't hear it at a teacher training for a few days for a few hours. You apply this stuff every day and you churn it, you talk, you ask questions. And then you put a sadhana with it, mantra meditation, association of like-minded people, visiting holy places, coming together with like-minded people, raising our standards of how we live. We don't just hear it, we practice it. And that starts to change the course of the car, the way the car is driving. Sometimes the car has been hit in pit, potholes. Sometimes we're driving one wheel off the edge. Sometimes we're ramming into uh, guardrails. Innocent bystanders. Hit, plowing down bystanders <laughs> with all my crazy choices. Anybody ever plow somebody down, so to speak? 
<laughs> anyway, we're here to pick ourselves up and uh, and I get something about this every day and I'm really appreciative. I, I, truthfully, if everyone wants to know the God honest truth while we're doing this, I'm damn selfish and I'm doing this for me. I'm doing it for myself so I can hear the Bhagavatam with accountability every day. That's my first. Number one on the list. Yes, no, I number one. There's, it's a threefold. It's a threefold. Uh, tree bunga. <laughs> Did you say tree bunga? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we have uh, to start it off today. We have some really special guests, special friends of Raghunath and myself. We got for those on the Zoom, we can see New York City Hari Nam. These hey. are we have two two of the two of the New York City Hari Nam team. All right, these guys are, how many are on the team now? We have, first, let me introduce you. We have Mahotsaha. Hey, Krishna. And we have Gopal Champu. Hey, these Krishna. guys are like gold. These guys are just like pure hearted souls, you know, that are just dedicating their lives to serve others. They're part of the New York City Harinam crew, which is how many people on the crew currently? 12 of us, Trooper. 12, okay. And, and you guys, you, you've, you got a place up in Washington Heights in Manhattan, but you trek on down to Union Square every day and in the winter into the different subway stations and they bring kirtan into those yeah. places um, every day without missing a day. You guys also broke a record, right? Cause you <laughs> we're breaking our record today. We went 75 shows in a row and you guys were on the streets of New York for six hours a day for how long until the pandemic broke that record? Uh, it's about seven years and Good. No, eight years. Oh, actually, just just short of eight years. Yeah, I, I was yeah. really getting proud 11. of seventy-five days there yeah. for a while. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't blew us out of the water. and they go six hours every day. We go one hour. <laughs> so, so every day they, you know, this is their mission. You know, it's led by Ram Roy Prabhu, and you know, he he really did it based on the inspiration of the great saint uh, Ayinger Prabhu, who who did twenty-four hour kirtan every day for years and years in, um, in Vrindavan. And so they brought Kirtan to the streets, but not only Kirtan, but they also bring, you know, these books. And so since they've, um, since the pandemic hit in, they all pulled out of New York and ended up in North Carolina. And I believe you're in Atlanta. And, uh, but they've still been kind of like sharing these books with people uh, online. And, and it has been great because we've been seeing lots of wisdom of the sages. People have been getting full sets of Bhagavatam, right? <laughs> yeah, full set of box times. How many volumes in the current edition? Nancy Ross is um, holding yeah, up her volume. In the English edition, you have 18, 18, 18, 18 volumes, books. 12, 12 candles. 12 candles. Yeah. And, and, um, and you sell them, you sell the sets of the Bhagavatam that costs $300, I think. Is that correct? Around, yes. yeah. Around yeah, we can ship it and, and we ship it anywhere. Anywhere in the world. Family. Even if you live in Alaska, we can okay. Antarctica. Yeah, we can <laughs> and um, and then you also sell other sets, right? Tell yes. us about the sets that you sell. So we can, this is, we like to say, it's like our entry set. It's called the Saptarishi. Saptarishi. So just taking a seven sages. The seven sages. So you got basically <laughs> kind of like the the whole shebang here. Okay. Um, starting with, you got the, the science of self-realization. Uh, the journey of self-discovery, Bhagavad Gita as it is, Krishna book, teachings of Lord Chaitanya, Nectar of Devotion, and Srimad Bhagavatam 1.1. And just like a quick quick thing we say, like the science of self-realization will explain to us how when we meditate, we open up the secrets of the self within, nature, nature and the, the universe. universe. The journey of self-discovery offers very practical advice how we can't solve um, our material problems with material solutions as to come spiritual solutions coming from a higher platform. I can get the Gita, that. They all know <laughs> Krishna is all the pastimes of Krishna, which is, there's nothing sweeter in this world. <laughs> Raghu um, does the, 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 the sweet baby Krishna classes uh, regularly on Patreon. So that's good well, for those okay. people that like that. And you have uh, the teachings of Lord Chaitanya, which was Krishna himself. And it's basically a condensed version of his teachings um, to, his, to his disciples and how he traveled, briefly traveled around India teaching this knowledge of bhakti. Great they insights have nectar, in that book. The Nectar of Devotion, which um, I like to tell people, you know, it talks about spiritual emotions. Basically, on the spiritual level, how do we approach Krishna and how we can um, strengthen our own practice to become more advanced. And then the Bhagavatam, they all know. 
Bhagavatam, right. you guys know. And then, uh, first we, first we canto, or first part of the first canto of Bhagavatam. Right. First part of the first, first canto. Part, first but that's thing. the Sapta Rishi. You also have the Bhagavatam set. How much does the Sapta and, Rishi and, set go for? So the Sapta Rishi, we generally, um, with the shipping, is about um, $70. And okay. this is, we're, we're trying to make this more available worldwide. But right as of now, it's primarily available here in North America. Okay, great. But we can, we can, we can. Arrange as many of the books as possible to anybody. Okay. They are. And we also have the Srila Prabhupada Lila Amrita. <sighs> Beautiful. It's the entire biography of Srila Prabhupada. How many? Uh, six like volumes? Seven volumes. Seven Actually, volumes. it's a new one because it has the additional pastimes too. There's a new new volume called Additional Pastimes. It's well, a I have to get that because well, I don't I, have the additional I, I just want to sh- have a, uh, a couple of appreciations for these guys. One yeah. is my 93-year-old mother. I got a photo of uh, <laughs> Mahotsava selling a book. No, no, go by, go by, go by. <laughs> go my mother, if I know my mom, she'd probably talk to you guys for hours. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, in a way. Just it, it like a she wanders around New York City in gabs at 93. <laughs> her own. And then I see this picture of her with all the devotees. Oh, uh, here's the photo. We can't see it. It's picture. blacked out. Oh, um, and then um, I had another great... One time I, I came back from India and it was a really wonderful trip with all the pilgrims. And then the day I arrived, I had to play a show at Irving Plaza with my band at some reunion. No, you did like three yoga workshops and played Irving Plaza that really weird. It was a really weird setup. But I remember that night I had to play a show. And then, um, so I needed some type of like, I just came from Vrindavan. I can't just go on stage. And I asked, could I sing with you guys? And I sat down and sang at Union Square. So I've had many, many sweet experiences. When I go to New York City and my kids go, they ask, oh, can we go to Union Square and see the devotees? We just sit down and chant with them. It's always always some type of like transcendental party going on there at Union Square. You give life to that place. For me, it's just like it's just total luxury to live in Manhattan, where it's like I could be on my way to the Bhakti Center. Hey, I'm on the way. I can drop in there, drop in for an hour and just do hard. I'm there, and I know they're going to be there. You know, this is like dedication, <laughs> right? Well, you know, Kostu, this Nagar Sankirtan or like just sitting and Street chanting Sankirtan. publicly, yeah. it is so powerful because it's one thing if I'm chanting with a bunch of yoga students and we're sitting there, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. It's great. I love it, of course. But everybody's sort of like, they, we've sort of accepted, Kirtan's interesting, it's cool, it's our path of meditate. It's another thing. When you're in a public environment yeah. where there's a bunch of people going, hey, cool, hey, weird, <laughs> right? And you're sort of like, you have to like dig deep and start mm-hmm. to really take shelter of the holy name. And then you sing from a place of just, you become empowered by the holy name. I can't, truthfully, I think with that, service of chanting the holy name in a public place where you don't know what the feedback is going to be that is the most transformative thing i've ever experienced wow so sitting there publicly and singing like that come on so you should anyway. all do that right now when this pandemic's <laughs> okay. over we should all go to union That's... square sit down there under the gandhi statue <laughs> and just chant with these guys <laughs> <laughs> all right. You know, I, so I, I was going to say, let's all pray that uh, for so many reasons that this whole lockdown opens up again sometime soon. But one of the most important reasons is that the New York Harinam team can get back to Union Square and we can see them again. It's, it's not summer isn't the same without you guys in New York, without, without you guys in, in Union Square. But uh, let us know. Now, now, this is the most important part. How we have so many listeners. We have, you know, 120 or so here live with us, but we also have thousands listening to each episode. So if they would like to, I, I really encourage everyone that that Bhagavatam set is like to have, just to have it in your home is like incredibly auspicious and to be able to go to it and follow along with wisdom of the sages. And really I, I'm saying this, I know it sounds maybe supernatural or whatever, you know, this is usually Rugged's apartment, but I, I have complete faith that just by bringing that set of books into your home, it's like bringing God right into your home. It's like, it's, 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 it has a very powerful presence. Mm-hmm. And so getting a set of Bible times, that's a lifetime investment. That's really worth it. All, if you're not ready to go there, that Sapta Rishi set is like, mm-hmm. just from that right there, it's super life-changing, you know? And that set of Prabhupada's uh, Lila Marita, 
you learn so much about everything, about the whole bhakti movement, about what bhakti is, about how it's played out in the life of a person. It's, it's an, an easy, re, easy way to read. It's a, it's a beautiful, moving biography that's got lots of personal testimonies scattered throughout, sprinkled all throughout it. Um, but there's so much to learn through it. So um, I really encourage people to try these books out. And these are the guys to get them from. So um, tell us if someone would like to reach out to you and, and get some books, how do they find you? So we have an um, a email that comes directly to myself and Mahot Prabhu. Okay. And right. that is nycbhakti at gmail.com. We'll, we'll put it in the chat. So okay, that's, so that's, that's NYC Bhakti. So NYC B H A K T I at gmail at gmail.com. Right. And so uh, they'll we'll, take care of you. We'll personally yeah. take care. Just send us your address, you know, send us your, um, you know, contact information, however you want us to reach out to you, and we'll send it right your way. Where are you, know, you from? Are you from, are, you from, huh? are, you from, are you from India? Yeah, I'm from Hyderabad, from South <laughs> India. From, how did you end up in New York City? I went to NYU, actually. I was uh, 17. I, I joined New York City a, at the age of 19. I was your, walking your by parents, Your parents live in India? Yeah. They sent you to America to study what? Computer science, of course. <laughs> Achha. Achha. <laughs> you know, but Raghu, he was rocking out. You see, he's looking all, you know, like, like Sadhu Vesh right now. But, he looks right? Sa- yeah, I like the I've Sadhu. Seen the, I've seen the photos, right? You were in a band. Yeah, yeah. Bass yeah, or something yeah, yeah. I was in a band, yeah. I, I went to music school, what? actually. Studied, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I studied bass in Paul McCartney's music school, London College of Music. And what kind of band were you in? What, 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 what were they all about? It was, it was like a progressive rock metal band. Wow. He, we, you know, you know who he should have been in a band with it was Radhika Raman, right? Ooh, that would have been good. Yeah. That would have been like unbelievable. You've heard about Radhika Raman, right? It's a, it's a yeah, whole we, show. We, we, he was a great soul, you know. Ram Roy must have told you about Radhika Raman a little bit, yeah? Do you know? Yeah, yeah he used to be uh, partners with Kali, Kali Krishna Prabhu, right? They used to distribute yeah, books yeah, together. Yeah, yeah. He used to yeah. do ballet on the streets and then distribute books after them. Yeah, yeah, he was a character, real character. Oh, wow. I got, we got to re- reconnect with Radhika Raman someday. So wow, send him sent to New York City to study computer engineering. Ends up in Paul McCartney's rock rock and roll school, and then um, became a monk on the streets of New York. And what do your parents think about that? Like they probably they first didn't like it at all, and I, I never really cared. You know, like I don't care. I'm doing this anyway. But then my what my kind dad of just Indian attitude me, is that I don't care. <laughs> I don't care what my oh, parents think. Nice Indian <laughs> A DD, oh, oh, do you hear this? Where's a DD? <laughs> yeah, you know, but my dad told me all I want you to do is just graduate from school. Yeah. So after you graduate, even if you take sannyas, I sub- I'll support you. That's, That's fair enough. Right. And so you graduated? Yeah, so, yeah I did. I did. I, I went like when I when I met the devotees, I just shaved up. I wore tilak dhoti. I went to school every day like this. And I and I had like a calendar and I would mark every day when is school gonna get over. And every <laughs> day be- Did you get good grades? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, yeah. Mahosa just, is. Come sir, go ahead. It, it was just I lived I lived my entire school life as with the Bhagavad Gita verse nine twenty two Ananya Shintayan Tumam Yajana Fayu Pasate Tisham Nityavi Yuktanam Yogic Shem Vaham Yamde. To those who are constantly meditating on my farm, I preserve what they have and I carry what they lack. So I just you know the whole time I, every day I went out on books no matter what. I wait a second. What your wait a second. You, this is with at the NYU dorm? Yeah. What right they, right by Union what Square. What do you think of you? I uh, I mean, you when, must have been I, the most exciting, cool <laughs> or boring roommate depending on who you are. Yeah, initially I was just, you know, I was uh, living in the dorms, but at the age of 19 I moved into the ashram. I thought I'll stay there for like 2 days and it's been, you know, 6 years and I'm still here. So I didn't really and all of a sudden, I just like one day, no one saw me in the dorms for a long time, and then I hey, showed up like this. Oh, no one saw you in the dorm. I get it. The yeah. name Mahotsaha literally means Maha means great, and Utsaha means enthusiasm. It means he's very enthusiastic, and he, he definitely lives up to the name. And, uh, you know, Mahotsaha, he, he is. He's fully enthusiastic, fully dedicated. And Gopal Champu, the same. And Gopal, and- where's Gopal from? Are you Long Indian? I- Long Island, right? No, no. Dominican. Dominican. I Dominican. thought you were Indian. <laughs> okay, yeah, no. Many people do. <laughs> I grew up in New York, so I'm a, I'm a New Yorker, you can say. Yeah. And he's, you know, also really cool just the sweetest, sweetest guy. And just uh, these, these are really dedicated souls. So 
it's worth just to support them to get some of these books, but the benefit of getting the books is unlimited too. So guys, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Thank People, you. if you would like to get some of these books, again, it's NYC Bhakti. How can I move it? How can I move into your ashram with you? Oh, just come, just come here. We'll <laughs> send you the ticket. We'll send you the. We'll send you the address. Just Will come you welcome to me. You have a little room for me on the floor. I don't. You'll have to take your kids with you. Yeah, I got kids. Well, we like some kids' donations too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm the I told you he's enthusiastic. Guru cool. <laughs> Raise my son, okay? I got a six-year-old who's out of his mind. Can you take care of him? Make him a... Absolutely, bro. So a couple of us was really, were really out of our minds when we joined. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. Thanks, Thanks for you, Bruce. Raghunath and Kasur Bruce for pu- putting this this uh, podcast together and giving everyone the chance, like like Raghunath Prabhu was saying, Nityam Bhagavad <laughs> Seva. Yeah. So every day, just um, having an opportunity to hear the Bhagavatam is the most auspicious thing, so... You're providing and, that shelter for so many people. And it's really, it's really And amazing. for those uh, on the air, we actually had some pictures with Raghunath Prabhu on our phone, but I, you, you can't see. You want to try again? <laughs> I don't know. If, I don't maybe know you can put it on the what do you call it? I wonder if you could. Uh, yeah, when it gets that close, yeah. it gets dark. But yeah. For those who, you know, you know, this is a very, very special book. It's called All Glories to the Sankirtan Devotees. Oh, no. This is it's, my. Uh, it's all about book distribution. Me and taking this, a this shower. From Prabhu's, <laughs> yeah, this is from Kausuba Prabhu's uh, Monk Days. So you can see him over here. Can you see it? Can you see that? I think that's me pouring a bucket of water over my head bucket out on the parking lot yeah. somewhere. <laughs> Kausu Prabhu performing austerities like anything, you know, taking bath in the cold outside, you know, just from a bucket. You know, I mean, man, these guys, so a lot of respect for them. Oh, a lot on. of respect for what they did. Thank you. Thank you both so much. Thank you both so much. Thank you guys. Appreciate your service Thank so you. much. Okay. So let's dive into questions. Okay. Questions and answers day. Uh, so I just I just kind of pulled some together. But did you want to take one from um, from Alex first? Because you have yeah, this from is from Alex Klesson from uh, Sweden. Okay, is this for you or is it for me or who's who's going to answer? Yeah, it's for, he just said ask it for question day. So if okay, you so we'll take, both take the first one. Um, but if you don't know Alex, Alex is awesome. He comes and stays at Super Soul every year, does jujitsu, and he's been to India with me three times. Came to India with me when he's 16 years old. He's and great. everybody everybody knows him, loves him, and his mother's like a liberated soul. She's a great soul too. Yeah. Travel in uh, Sweden with our band, and she used to set up all these speaking engage engagements for me at the different. Uh, you know, there's like Krishna restaurants in different cities. So I would go to Lund and Stockholm and Malmo. And right before our performance, there'd be a thing like Raghunath, the singer of Shelter, will give a talk on the Bhagavad Gita. So we'd go there and we'd have a talk on the Bhagavad Gita. And then like 100 people would be packed in the restaurant and we'd all have dinner and then we'd all go to the show. It was really great. We did that every day. And so. Swedish straight edge kids. Yeah. Yeah. It was like great, great. Great crowd, right? It was huge. It was huge. And that was, you know, it's 20 years ago. But I knew his mother. And then he came and uh, he was, you know, I th- you know, he bo- these kids born into bhakti. But, you know, it's still one of those things. And we, I think we had this conversation with Gauravani when he was on the show, was you still grow up with it, but you have to opt into it yourself. Yeah. You can't just say, okay, my parents are this, and now I'm this. This is the thing about bhakti. You can't just like be born into it. You can't just join the club. You can't just wear the outfit. You have to, in your heart, give your heart over. And that's like a, a, a step everybody has to take. And you have to take it more than once. And so I watched Alex go through this threshold into his spiritual life. And he's just a great, sweet kid. Um, but he's super sharp, like anything. He asked this question, um, in a world and culture full of so many nasty things, I find myself becoming increasingly angry and fault-finding, even uh, hard-hearted. I focus on all the defects in society and in people's character and actions, my own too. Is there any way to grow into a strong character with good values without feeding the fire of anger and resentment for all nasty things because I understand that I have half because I understand that I have to be clear and black and white on certain things because if I blur the lines chances are I'll go off track so you know what he's saying he's saying I have to say 
this is wrong, this is right. He's, he's afraid to go into shades of gray. Um, I know that anger, etc., are not part of a good character or spiritual elevation. And I've heard many times that attachment and aversion are two sides of the same coin. What I'm afraid of is if I give up this strong discernment or discrimination in my mind, I'll lose my compass. Does that make sense? That makes a lot of sense. This is opposite of what I'm supposed to be doing, which you taught me, seeing the good in others and seeing them as pure spirit souls, etc. He's making a great point here. Yeah. I like the question a lot. This, this is the kind of question. This is, see, there are questions and then there are questions. This is a very good question because it's, it's, it's born of contemplation of how I can improve, right? How, how I can advance. And, and, and I can, you can feel in it. He's gone to certain, he's gone down layers and he's come to this point, right? And, and so there's a, there's this, um, on one hand, I got to be clear about what's right and wrong. But on the other hand, I get to, I've become judgmental and angry, and, and that's not good for my meditation, my devotion. So, you know, how do I work this out? I like the question a lot. So, Raghu, answer it for us, please. Well, I, first, I want to just say that most of the world is addicted to news channels, and news channels bring out enemies. They they have an agenda and a narrative against with there are others out there who are against our platform. And it's very easy to start to, and, and, they, and they, instead of finding the good, they do the extreme opposite. They just rail on what's bad. They highlight, they put the microscope in on what's bad and they blow it up. So you really live in a, a polarized world of friends and enemies, especially in this climate right now. Um, but, you know, I always use this as an example of an alcoholic. Sometimes an alcoholic has to say things like, I don't go to bars. Okay. Well, even if you're going to go to a bar and drink a lemonade, no, I don't go to bars. So sometimes at certain ages in my life, I too had to like draw a line in the sand of this is what I don't do anymore. You have to put like a guardrail up. I don't go this because if I go that way, my car will go right off the cliff. I put a big high guardrail up. Some people need those in their life. This is wrong. This is right. Krishna did it in the 16th chapter of the Gita. This is divine qualities. These are demonic qualities. It spells it really in, you know, simple black and white. Um, but as we like mature in our bhakti, there are these shades of gray where we will have to learn to appreciate people that are not like us. So I don't think it's abnormal. He's 19 years old. He has this, and, and, and at 19, you are embodied by the mode of passion cloak. <laughs> the mode of passion sort of like owns you at 19. And everything is to act, you're getting pulled in every direction of your, of your senses. And you're at the healthiest time in your life generally. You're at the best looking time in your life generally. There's so much opportunity and culture for sense gratification. And it's a really, really tough place to be for those who are trying to follow a bhakti path and my heart goes out to them. Um, yes. I don't know. You got any good answers? <laughs> well, I think, so. I, think we're, no, I, I think I know the point you were working towards <laughs> before you ran no, out of gas. Finish, my, finish it. <laughs> that, that, and at that age, because those challenges are there, challenges to the senses and so on, that one, it might actually be beneficial in one's practice to kind of, not see shades of gray, but to kind of see things in black and white. It might get you through that period of life. Is that where you're working? Is that yeah, it might get you through that period of life. Yeah. But it's, yeah. you gotta be careful not to hate or else he, and he knows, I think he's pretty smart and I think he'll get over it. But you know, it's a natural thing when people get into anything new is we tell them to become fanatical about the things we're obsessed with. And we just have to temper, te we have to temper that with, with, with love and compassion. Yeah. I think it'll come natural for a person like Alex, who's, who's naturally very broad-minded. The very fact that he's concerned about it is... The very fact that it's on his radar. Yeah. I, I was going to say that, you know, th there's talk about anger, you know, throughout Shastra, throughout the scripture, throughout the, the, the yoga teachings. And the problem with anger is, it, it, it's not just anger. It's attachment, anger. Actually, what is it? Vita, Raga, Bhaya, Kroda right? That, that one has to become free of these for, one, for one's 
for one's learning to mature into knowledge and for that knowledge to, 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 to open one up for, to wisdom, right? Wisdom means I'm detached now. Wisdom means I move through this world and my senses aren't dragging me here and there because I just know what, what is and what isn't, what's right and what's wrong, what, what, what's happening in this world. And from that peaceful mind, I can absorb my mind in thinking of God. That's called meditation. If your mind's not peaceful, you can't meditate. You'll be distracted. And so we want to become free from anger. Anger is usually in response to our lack of ability to control. We want to control, and, but our control is very limited. And when that, the limit of that control, you know, when we hit that threshold and we want to change something or someone and we can't, then the result becomes anger. Um, we, the, the, the state of consciousness that allows for deeply absorbing the mind and thoughts of God in, in deep meditation is it's a state where you actually see every living being uh, as pure, pure spirit. And you actually feel a spiritual connection to everyone. Anger will get in the way of that. Attachment, lust will get in the way of that, you know? Um, so, so the yogi is trying to become free of these. Therefore, they're living a simple life. If I live a simple life, I don't tend to become so angry because I, I've realized I don't need this or that to be happy. And so one becomes content. So these are all parts of the practice of yoga that, and, and, and here's one thing to think about. And, and I wish I was thinking about this when I was 19. I know. I, I, I really wish we're I was, relishing our anger. Yeah, that's right. And I, I love wish, finding others. I, I, um, I, you know, to, to think of this, I wish I was thinking about this when I was 29 or 39 more. Only at this point in my life is it is arising more in me, even though I've been reading these books for many, many years. But <clears throat> always trying to remember that Krishna is present in the heart of every living being as the Paramatma. That he's there right in that body of that person and right in my body as well. And if I can be aware of this in all my dealings, and in order to become aware of this, I need to, to open up the relationship with God in my own heart. I need to speak to God in my own heart, try to listen to God in my own heart on a daily basis, right? And if I can do that and I can begin to perceive, begin to at least think in the way that I'm talking to a person right now, but God's in their heart. And so whatever behavior they're manifesting right now, I know we're both standing right in God's presence. Mm. And, and I know that just like they're behaving in a way that I feel is not so great. I know that I behave that way so many times. I know that we, we are both mostly moving through this world, world, ignoring that connection of God in our heart. I can't hold it against this person. I can't be angry with them, right? We're, we're in the same boat here. We're both lost souls that are trying to, that, that, are, that, that need to reconnect. And I think the more that we meditate on that, the more that we start to let go of anger. And we start to let go of anger be, as is expressed first in our body and then next in our words. And then ultimately we, we let go of it in our mind entirely. And then that mind becomes suitable, capable of being absorbed in the name, the form, the qualities and the pastimes of God. And that meditation transforms one entirely. So our life is meant to get us to that platform where we can meditate like that. And, uh, and, and again, I say, if, I, if at 19 I was thinking about that, um, I think I'd be in a much better place right now. So good for you, Alex. Yeah, it's and thank you for the question. Things change also. Our passions, our pulls, so to speak, at different, at different points of our life for sure when we get married or settled or uh, things change. And so don't, therefore don't become angry because they're going to change anyway. Is that what you're saying? No, I mean, I mean, uh, there's good, there's hope. It's not always going to be like this. Okay. Gotcha. All right. You ready for a question? Another one, Rogo? Sure. That was a great answer, by the way. I, I, I liked your answer. I'm going to meditate on that too. I didn't really say anything. I just sort of like teased out the problem. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, here's, a, here's one. This one came from the, the chat board. Is the, playing, uh, the, is the Discord, playing, the Patreon Discord. I, I think it came off the, the Zoom one at some one day. It was pulled up by Mara. Okay. Oh, this is probably the day that we talked about like how the world is like a virtual reality. Okay. So someone said, is playing video games tamasic? Rogu, is playing video games tamasic? Um, and nowadays everyone's all, all parents are writing in, I'm talking about homeschooling parents are saying, ah, oh, it's got a lot of good benefits doing video games. 
I still vote for the, I still vote for, I'm really anti-video game myself. I think it's addictive. Addictive things tend to be Tomasic. They draw you into a double rea. I'm sure that's good for hand-eye coordination and things like that. But um, I think there's some serious problems with things that are just, I mean, I, I felt like they didn't even have good video games when I was a little kid. They had like Blockbuster where you're trying to like um, break a hole in a thing of blocks or Pong, Super Pong. <laughs> but they were addictive. I could tell they were addictive as a child. And so I don't like them personally. My, I, my mother never encouraged me to play them and I just didn't play them, so. Well, like Tomasic by definition is self-destructive, right? I mean, people make careers out of, I just found this out yesterday. I had no idea, but people make careers out of these video games. Out of playing them. Out of playing them. Yeah. It's, you know, it's just like one of these things. It's definitely not sattvic. It, I, I will say, like I was saying, my, my, my kids got me on the Star Wars marathon. It's been this entire week I've been watching Star Wars. Never really sat down and watched Star Wars before. I've never seen it, any of them. Well, Not I went to my, eight, my like 10 year old birthday party was the very first Star Wars with my, all, all my birthday party, but I never really got into it or watched it. This, and there's a lot of like incredibly valuable lessons that Yoda gives. My kids, my kids are all like, Yoda is Radha Swami. <laughs> I was like, is that an offense or a, a kind thing to say? But I think they I think they meant it from a kind way. Um, but anyway, there are a lot of great instructions there. It's like these ancient themes that reoccur of good and evil, etc. cetera. Um, but my only thing is the impressions that I went to bed with were like evil robots. Those were in my mind instead of sweet baby Krishna in my mind when I go to bed at night. So okay. it's, you know, there's always different layers of stuff. Yeah. People who are a little spiritual, they can go into a dark place and, oh, I, got, I learned this lesson from that. I learned this lesson from that. But to, Let's say they tend to be Tomasic. Uh, we're, are we talking about video games now? Yeah. Back, video games? Yeah. Um, I think yeah. they tend to be addictive. And if, especially these things like... Uh, well, but, okay, but answer the question. By addictive, do you mean self-destructive? You know, I can't give an absolute answer because everyone's going to. That's why I use the word "tend." That I put that word "tend" in there. So, so they tend. So they tend I, I think they tend to be. I think yeah, that. Okay. Tend to be. So then, I think that's our answer. Then, oh, that was from yeah. Bakta Ed. So, or was that from Bakta Ed? No, that was that was uh, it. Uh, that was from the Zoom chat board. So, so I, I agree. Let's say they tend to be Tomasic. I I feel they tend to be time wasters. They tend to be some, addictive, and then you start wasting more and more time. It's like, we, time is so precious. You can't buy this stuff back. Yeah. You can't buy back time. You got a lot of money, can't buy it. And what to speak of some of these video games they have now. I remember, you, this was years ago. This was like 15 more years ago. I was, I was, I was um, when I first came back to New York after being a monk, you know, uh, this great soul, David Dritta, you know, gave me a job cooking. I was cooking prasadam for his team, which was the, this, uh, th he ran a little company out of his apartment and I would cook, but, but for just a short amount of time, they started playing this video game there, which was that real famous one, um, Grand Theft Auto. Hold it. Grand Theft I got gonna say something about Grand Theft Butter. I got offered $5,000 <laughs> to put a song on Grand Theft Auto. You turned it Auto. down. I turned it down. Look at that integrity. What song? <laughs> Uh, one, a youth of today song oh, okay. because they wanted, they wanted it. It was, it was like horrible. It was like, you know, prostitution shooting. That's people. what it was. It was like, you jump out of the car, you, you, you kill a prostitute, you get like money, you get like points or something like that. Here's a like, deal. Run her over in the No, park. I don't care. We've lowered the bar. We've lowered the bar. I get it. It's completely normal to do that now. No, I'm not going to do it. Right. Yeah. So yeah, you could. The music, At a certain point, you just got to say, what, what, what have we no, done? What I, my God, what have we done? What, have I, what am I putting my ears and eyes and mouth? And no, no. I say no. <laughs> oh. Just say no. <laughs> okay, there we go. Let's leave it at that. Okay, you ready for the next question? Why don't we just both handle the questions today, right? Because right. it seems yeah. more natural this way. All right. So, Parmanov um, said it was $10,000. Okay, I get around this farm. I made a mistake. I'll take it. <laughs> Everybody's got their price. Is it too late? <laughs> <laughs> 20. <laughs> okay. 
Um, here's a question, Bhagavad Gita question from Marcus Franchi in Brazil. How do you say hello in Portuguese, Rago, when you're in Brazil? Obrigado. Okay, obrigado. No, that's thank you. Todo bem. Todo bem. I would like to know your opinion on Krishna's words. First, establish yourself in yoga and then act. How do you know you're established? So I believe he's referring to uh, 248 there. Uh, maybe I'll pull that up, right? But you want to get started on this one, Rogu? Read it again. Alex just texted me and said, I missed the answer. <laughs> <laughs> well, I apologize. You can, you can always. Uh, so the question again is from Marcus. I would like to know your opinion on Krishna's words. First, establish yourself in yoga and then act. Yoga stal kuru karmani. I believe that's what he's referring to, text 248. Should I read the whole verse for you, Raghu? Sure. Let me pull this up. It's a very important verse, particularly for those yogis out there, uh, because there's a definition of yoga in this verse as well. <laughs> yoga stal kuru karmani, sangam chaktva dhananjaya, sidya sidhyo samo bhutva, Samadvam yoga uchate. Perform your duty equipoised, O Arjuna, abandoning all attachment to success or failure. Such equanimity is called yoga. Mm. So yoga sta means, Prabhupada translates it as equipoised, but it also means like situated in yoga, right? Sta means like fixed in yoga. Kuru, perform karmani, perform your duties. You know, so, so yoga sta kuru karmani, perform your duty. Fixed in yoga, O oh Arjuna, abandoning all attachment to success or failure. Such equanimity is called yoga. So Marcus is saying, what does that mean? Um, uh, first become, you know, first establish yourself, establish yourself in yoga and then act. Hmm. I, I mean, I could get us started. You know, yeah. what's, what's being said here is that what turns regular activity into yoga is that you, you're doing it with, with detachment. You're not doing it with any personal motive, right? So therefore it says, um, samadvam yoga uchate. Samadvam means this equanimity of mind, whether it's hot or cold, whether people are being polite or impolite to me, whether you know, uh, I'm being successful or it's, it's, it's not working, my mind stays even. Krishna is saying here, samadvam, this equanimity, yoga uchate, that's called yoga. So detachment and knowledge come, one, come hand in hand, right? Jnana, knowledge, and vairagya. When you have knowledge, then you can look at the world and see it for what it is, and you can become detached from it. Because, because you're realizing that, that by nature I'm happy, I don't get it from anything external. And so that's called jnana. Understanding that is jnana, that's knowledge. And from that, one naturally becomes attached. I can leave behind the external things in life. When one acts in this world without that, then you're acting based out of illusion and you're binding yourself. You're not a yogi in that situation, but you're a yogi, you're yoga sta, you're situated in yoga when you have that detachment and you move through this world, not to thinking that I'm gonna get happiness from this material object or from this material circumstance, you're, you're realizing my happiness is, is my nature. It fully manifests through bhakti in connection with God. And so I move on behalf of God. That's yoga sta, right? That's being fixed in yoga. So that's how I understand. I like that. your answer. Let's just go you're with happy with that. Okay. Yeah. So, 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 so when it says, you know, you could translate this, translate it as first establish yourself in yoga and then act. You could do it that way, but the way that I really see it is act, act established. When, as you act, be established in yoga. Mm. And that means I have detachment. I'm not, I'm not doing it for any personal motivation. I'm doing it with wisdom like that. I hope, uh, Marcus, I hope that's helpful. Okay. And uh, it's a beautiful verse. It's a verse worth memorizing out there. So what you do is you, you dial up New York City Harinam by writing to nyc bhakti at uh, gmail.com and you say send me a bhagavad gita and that whole saptarishi set so that i can <laughs> learn more of these verses and then you carry that verse around with you like a jewel right it's like a gem that you can treasure that you have with you and it really helps in life 
Okay. What else we got there, Costuba? This is a tough one. This is a serious one. You ready? Carla? Yeah. Can you, this is coming from, this is an anonymous one. Can you talk a little about the fine line of serving your husband, wife, or master servant relationship? The fine line between service and abuse. And they said, I, I don't really understand that it's kind of like an incomplete sense. It says question is based on control. Literally, this is the question. Can you talk a little about the fine line of serving your husband, wife, master servant relationship and abuse? Question is based on control. Go. First thing that comes to mind, there has to be some self care, self um, integrity. And so sometimes it's common if a, if a person has been in a, a situation where they allow themselves to be walked all over, it becomes problematic in relationships. And um, they almost like feed into these people who are extremely dominant. So there has to be some self-care for our own, first of all, our own physical health, our own, you know, safety, et cetera. Um, and then our own, our own, uh, our own uh, taking care of what we consume, et cetera, taking care of uh, our own personal sadhana. And then of course there has to be reciprocal relationships. And there's gotta be a point where you know explicitly who you are and you say, you know what? I don't do this. I don't go there. And we have to be able to find healthy boundaries. Now, if you've had problems or if you've had a lot of trauma in your life, sometimes it's hard to uh, find what those healthy boundaries are. And we find ourselves again and again in tragic relationships. So that's something um, people have to work out with a therapist, people who specialize in things like this. Um, but those are sort of like the telltale symptoms. If you come from abuse, um, if you've had a, abusive relationships in, in childhood, I'd be, I'd be very careful about taking, taking that paradigm as normal and then entering into romantic relationships, marriages, et cetera. And if you're already there in a relationship, I'd check it out. I, I, I would work with your counselor. I feel like this is unhealthy, or with counselor or therapist, I feel like this might be unhealthy. What do you think? Now, I've, I think that in a marriage, there's always like type of compromise. And I went from Alex's first question this is wrong. This is right. When I was 22, when I was a monk and I had to change that. And, and, and like Alex, I questioned, well, I don't know. I, I should be more broad minded. Don't worry. You'll get married one day. And then you're forced to become broad minded because, uh, you know, as much as, okay, monks ready for this one, as mug, as much as selfless service there is when we're monks, you never feel real selflessness until you pop out a kid. And then you're like, Ugh! <laughs> then you really get selfless. Like I can't sleep selfless, you know? Or you, have an, or you have a spouse that you love that disagrees with what you're doing or how you're doing it or the way you are. And it becomes an incredible type of give and take, balance, broad-mindedness. And anybody who's been in a relationship for, for many years, they find that like, it's not just a straight line like it was when I was a monk or when I was single, et cetera. So there has to be some give and take. That's normal. People do it all the time with uh, my husband or wife drinks alcohol. My husband or wife eats meat. My husband or wife, you know, I wasn't into the spiritual path. We've been married for 10 years and now I'm on a spiritual path. How do I deal with that? Should I leave them? I always say, no, no, no. You got to learn to tolerate these things. Um, but you have to figure out what that line, what is the line that you draw? It's really easy to say, give up everything. And I, I never vote for that for the most part, because oftentimes um, it's not done from a very grounded way. It's done from almost like a um, excited mode of passion or a Raja Guna type of way where you feel like I'm above everybody else. But there are certain things that people have a tendency for, um, they let all types of dangerous elements into a relationship that should never be there. And if you've come from a background, check that out with your therapist. How does that sound, Costuba? All right. Thank you, Rogo. I like that. I mean, it's important. I, you, you approached it from, I think, the point of not being abused. And I think we also have to look at it from the point of not abusing others too, right? It's like, 
in this both sense. Yeah. Because well, you know, we talk about selfless service and selfless service. This means nothing to a person who's come from a, a background of trauma or abuse. They will give that selfless service and they'll be abused and they'll allow abuse to come to them. So they have, there has to be a, some kind of a concept of personal safety and right. self-care. So, so I'm saying, I think, it, and I think you cover that nicely. And, I'm, and this is the other point that I wanted to bring up was that we also have to realize that we're all prone to abuse others too. And until we really come to that point where we, where we really get that idea, where we really embrace the idea that, again, my happiness is eternal. It's not coming from anything external. Then we can enter into relationship that's based on, on uh, reality. You know? So like you take husband and wife relationship was mentioned here. If husband and wife are looking at each other to fulfill one, you know, to, 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 to be the, the, the source of one's happiness going forward, it's likely, it's very possible that on one level or another, that relationship becomes abusive because I'm looking for you to kind of complete my happiness, you know, and, and, and if it's not coming, there's going to be some pressure in some way to try to get it there. Whereas if the two together realize our happiness is something that's our nature, it's, it, you know, such it ananda is our nature. What we both need to do is we both need to, to, to connect with that divine source of ours, to connect with God. That's where we're, we're finding our happiness. So we're both, instead of looking at each other for that completeness. I highly doubt looking, that you have a tendency to abuse, Kostuba. We all have a tendency to abuse, Rago. You do you not. You and me, I'm going to... I don't think Mara, you, Mara or you have a tendency to abuse. <laughs> I don't think you've got it in you. Yeah, no, I think I think more. I've got it more than you, Ruggo. You're 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 the selfless guy here, taking care of the sheep, the, the guinea hens. I'm an angry. I'm an angry man. <laughs> no, you're not. Okay, we got a few minutes for one more question. Okay, you ready? Another question. Okay, this one. <laughs> I think you're going to be a great person to answer this because I think you're so realizing this. But don't take it the wrong way. Because I'm saying that you're the right person to answer this because you're so good at this. You ready? Ready. This is coming from back to Ed. This guy is a wealth of he good is. questions. Yeah, he's, he's got a lot of questions. How does one preach without coming off like a judgmental jerk? <laughs> Go. <laughs> How about just live? Just live. Just live. How's that, that sounds happen? like a wishy-washy answer to me, Rogo. I want to hear more of this. Just, just live. live. What is that? Just live. We can answer just every question that way. Just live. live. Uh, you know what? Here, here's, you know what I- <laughs> Give me something. Okay, me something. I'm going to give you something to hold on to here. All right. When I teach a class often, I bring up my shortcomings, my struggles. I throw my own personal life into the situation. I like that. Here's what I struggle with. You know, here's the hill I'm trying to climb. Here's the cliff I cannot get over right now. Mm -hmm. What do you guys think about that? And by throwing yourself into the experience and sharing your vulnerabilities, it gives permission for other people to say, you know what, me too. He thinks he struggles with that. I really do. Sometimes I'll even, sometimes I'll even like ex make, make it, I'll even go extreme and say, I really struggle with this, even though I may not be really struggling with it. <laughs> make the point. Just to make the point that these are real struggles. No one's alone with these struggles. These kama, krota, loba, moga, lust, greed, anger, envy. These things, they've contaminated the spirit soul forever. So you're not unique out there. We're as, as unique as we are, we're all very much the same in these things that we struggle with. And um, by, by, by throwing yourself under the bus. And, you know, I think in the old days we used to say, we, the preaching was more like, um, you should do that and you should and we should like that. I don't like it. I don't like it because it feels, first of all, it feels like you're being preached to and no one likes that for the most part. But if you say, I find, like if I was going to send, here's a Bhagavatam. I find this book has really changed me. I find, because people want to hear your personal experience and you can share why it has changed you. I think that's a wonderful answer. It, it, you know, it, getting back to the topic of like the current political discourse in America, you know, so much of it is finger pointing and, and you know, debasing your opponent. Um, 
but I really like the mood where you're coming from, where one looks at one's own shortcomings, shares one's own struggles. Then you don't come off as what was the, what was it? A judgmental jerk. Cause you're judging yourself. Mm. And, and, but it communicates more effectively. Someone says, you know what, what he's struggling with, I struggle with that too. And what he's saying makes a lot of sense. Whereas if you, if you go too direct, it can come off as you're being judgmental and the walls of, you know, uh, resistance go up, you know? Yeah. So I think that was a great answer. And hopefully Buck to Ed, that'll be helpful to him. Well, it also helps that I have a lot of problems. <laughs> the more problems you got, the more dented you can, the more you're going to have to share. <laughs> I have deep realization about my dents. Okay. Um, guess what, man? It's, I hate it. to do this, but it is time. Crank up the my pores. What do we, I, 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 I don't want to not do the show tomorrow. I know it's the 75 Saturday morning sleep in Saturday fun. Ah, oh, I'm, I'm broken hearted. Well, I'm you're going to be busy anyway. I know. I guess I'll be up. Hopefully I'm, I'm you'll join us. If you haven't heard, please join us. I'm teaching a yoga class. I haven't done that in a while. I'm teaching a yoga class, giving Hari Kata <clears throat> during the course of the day. Radha Swami's going to speak also. Janavi's going to be there. Yogi Charu, great soul. We have to get him on the show. Yeah. <sighs> Thanks for everybody joining us late. If you want to join our secret groom, our secret secret groom, secret someone getting married. Groom. If you want to become a groom, <laughs> if you want to join our Zoom group. Email Mara at wisdom of the sages one hundred eight at gmail dot com, and you can get on that, get on our Zoom group. Or if you'd like to join our even more secret society, the Patreon dot com slash wisdom of the sages. Go for it. Join our little club. And thanks, everybody. Thanks, for everybody on Zoom who uh, joined late. I didn't get to say good morning, too. I'll say it right now. And if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, you have to go to your iPhone, click on Podcasts, find us, and write a five-star review for us, please. It helps us keep our podcast in the conversation. And it helps push that one that said Raganath is annoying. It pushes that way back so people don't read it as the first one. So make sure you cover that one up. Write one that says Raganath is not annoying today. He's not annoying. He's like quite charming and and, and very deep. <laughs> uh, for Davin Lee, good to see you. Was the DT on today? Tell Aditi we're looking for. It seems like a lot of people take their anger out in the mosh pit, Kostuba. I don't know if you read those. Mosh pit? What are you talking about? That board. That's where Mara tends to take out her anger. Why do you think she's so calm? Really? She's like in a mad ball or something like that and gets in that mosh pit. And Sri Radhika, thank you. Welcome, Barbie, Bobby Marchand. Remember, we got our teacher training with myself and Bobby and Kostuba G. Starting July 17th, Super Soul Farm Upstate. Come check us out. Hopefully, that'll be in person, right? Yoga. And we'll see you Sunday, everybody, for Ruth Bini G, Gorabani's mom, great soul herself, Urban Davy, mistress, master, maestro. Here we go. Let's kill it right here. Jessica Snabolo Jerome.